What's up guys, my name is Scalibur and welcome to Minecraft 1.11. This is the most recent snapshot of 1.11, it's 13... Is it 13? Hang on. <laughs> it's 16W39C, there we go, that's what I was looking for. Uh, and if you're wondering here why our little base looks so dull, it's because basically I have no Optifine. Um, I'm actually going to have to get used to playing Minecraft without Optifine for a few weeks here, whilst things get updated. Oh, the sky looks rubbish. <laughs> it looks so boring. Whatever, we'll have to just live with it for a while. And also the world actually looks, like, normal as well. Like, there's no super darkness. I bet the nether looks normal as well. We'll have to check that out at some point today. <laughs> Playing without Optifine is actually quite interesting because it's, it's such a big difference now because I've made so many changes that are reliant on it. But uh, yeah, what can you do, I guess? So here we are in Minecraft 111. There are a few changes that have been made to the game and I do want to show you guys them at some point today. We're going to use a few of them as well. But before we do all that, I want to go into a snapshot test world and we can test out a few of these features because as good as these features are, I will admit, we are still kind of a baby in Minecraft right now. This, As you can tell by our base and everything in it, we're still spelunking. Like We're not to a point now where we can start building big mansions and creating big redstone things. We're just, we're just not there yet. So I can't really show you many of the features today in my world, legit, as you usually would see by most LPers. But what we can do is we can go into a test world. So this picture just about sums up uh, 111. As you can see here, we have the llamas. They sound hilarious. And look at the baby llama. <laughs> It's so so derpy. Its neck is bigger than its body. It's it's just amazing. I love it. The baby llamas look adorable, but in like a really weird way. I can't zoom. I tried to zoom in then, but again, not up to find. So what can you do? Uh, yeah, you can see the way that mob heads work is that when a mob is a baby, its head is always exactly the same size. I'll demonstrate here with something more relatable that we recognise. So a cow we've got here, you'll see that the cow shares the exact same head as the adult cow, but obviously the body is a lot smaller, and it's supposed to make baby animals look adorable. But with the llama, its head is its entire neck, look there's no separation here, that's its head. So <laughs> the head's the same size, <laughs> but the body's tiny and it just looks so derpy, I love it. It's amazing, so we'll get a few more of these guys, because llamas are amazing. Uh, and here we have a caravan going, so I'm actually going to take advantage of this. We're going to get ourselves a lead, because this feature is so funny. If I get one llama on a lead here, <laughs> all the llamas are going to form a caravan, just like that, and it looks so good. <laughs> Look at this. <laughs> it looks hilarious. It's a bit weird, it doesn't work as you'd expect. Like, they, you see, if I turn too hard, they start to walk. In a, yeah, see that? They start to walk in a weird direction. But what I found out of this entire llama trail, this llama with the um, carpet on right here, I was going to say saddle them, but yeah, it's a carpet, isn't it? This llama with the carpet on is the, actually the only llama that's tamed out of the entire caravan. So, weirdly enough, untamed llamas form a caravan, which personally I think is a bug. Like That might be an intended feature, but that doesn't seem, doesn't seem right to me. Do you really want to be in a wilderness and you try and take your llamas back home and you end up bringing home about 50 strays that aren't even yours. I mean, maybe that's a good thing if you want to transport llamas around to be bred later on, but this is, it seems pretty weird. It's like, I don't know, it's weird behavior, but I quite like it. I also think the baby llamas shouldn't caravan. I just think they should try and stick to an adult like baby animals usually do. You can see the baby cows over there is trying to stick to its mother, regardless of what happens. If I push the cow away, the baby's going to follow regardless. I think the llamas in the caravan as babies works because they're still following adults, but they're using the exact same behavior of forming a caravan. I don't know, I, th I, th I think there's a lot of changes that need to be made here, but it's a great concept, I love the idea. Um, and also this is a thing, if you put the lead onto a fence they just remain in a caravan forever. And it looks really weird because they all just kind of break. <laughs> <laughs> as you can see here. But it's funny, and it's good, and I like it, so there we go. Next we have the shulker box, and we have a bunch of carpets in here to test as well. Uh, I went through all the carpets, all 16 of them, and tested out the ones which I think were funniest. So we have here, not funniest, sorry, best looking. So we have the Siam one, which is probably my favourite one, because it looks really good. It has all this markings down the side, and it has like chains around his neck, and this nice coloured saddle, and it has like the frills at the bottom, it looks good. And then we have a few more wacky ones. Uh, the yellow one is the same, pretty much, but just got like a gold colour. This one looks awesome, like if you want to have a posh llama. Then we have purple. This one is sick. It has ender eyes on it and it contrasts the white so well. So if you have a white llama, purple carpets are awesome. Uh, green, we have like a creeper face. It's a bit ugly 
in a in a way in a sense I don't really like the fact that it's just all flat colour with a sticky out creeper face. But it's quite nice and I imagine there'll be a lot of kids that like this because creepers and that, so <laughs> so there we go. Um and also we have uh black, which looks pretty good as well. This one's just kinda like a default one. Um it has a bit of purple in there as well, which I quite like. Purple is a nice colour in my opinion. Um and yeah, you can see it's kind of like just a very plain one. So if you want plain and professionalism, black looks good. Then you have grey, and grey just looks amazing because he gets shades. How good is that? <laughs> the grey one is easily the funniest. Like I just lo I love Mojang for doing that. Like you putting a saddle on a llama and you get sixteen different options, just make one of them have shades, because why the hell not? <laughs> it looks brilliant, so there you go. Grey is probably the funniest one. Cyan is my favourite one. Over here we have some more items from the update. We have the Totem of Undying, which I'm going to demonstrate in just a second. Uh, and then we have, of course, the Shulker Boxes again here, which come in all different kinds of colours. As you can see here, we've got ranging from white to black with all the different colours in between. The default um, Shulker Box that you get when you craft these things from two Shulker Shells, which can be found here, Shulker Shells, like that. You craft two of those with a chest, one either side of the chest, and you get yourself a shulker box. It becomes the purple shulker box by default, and then you can re-dye it by putting dyes onto it and stuff in the future, so there you go. And then of course we have the observer block, probably the biggest change to this, um, like, you know, update there is. So if I put a redstone, piece of redstone in front of the observer, every time it gets a, a block update, it does, it pulses for one tick. Now, that is very helpful for a number of reasons, like there are literally so many possibilities. It's quite easy to say that th this is not a bold statement at all. The redstone world has literally changed, like, every aspect because of this one block. This block changes everything. <laughs> it sounds really cliche and derpy, but um, seriously, this block has literally changed redstone. And I'll show you some demonstrations right now. For example, we have this. This is a redstone elevator. It's so fast. It's 30 blocks a second. 30 blocks a second. And look how simple it is. If you wanted to get 30 blocks a second previously, you had to do some weird redstone, and now you just need a bunch of quartz and some cobblestone and some redstone, and you're done. This thing is so cheap, but it's so good. It can be a little unreliable. I have had it break a few times, and I have no idea if this works on SMP or not. Probably not, to be honest, considering SMP does give you a bit of lag. But again, if you have a bad computer, this might not be the thing for you. But it is pretty consistent, if I'm honest. It does work pretty well. So, next up we have the Totem of Undying, so I can go to Game Mode Survival. Jump off the top of here, and die. But also not die, because that thing is really cool. Uh, I'm going to give myself some cooked... Pork chop. Pork chop, there we go. Um, so yeah, that's, that thing's pretty cool. It gives you regeneration too for a long time. In fact, it gives you regeneration too for a hell of a lot longer than a potion. Like, the potion regeneration too... In fact, hang on, game mode creative. The potion regeneration 2 gives you it for 22 seconds. Regeneration 2 from the totem gives you about a minute's worth. So actually the totem works as a really good um, way of replacing the regen potions. That's good. Next up we have a game rule called Do Weather Cycle. This has been needed in the game for a long time. If you turn this to false, it just simply means that the weather will not work. It's as simple as that. The weather just doesn't like act. It's, it's brilliant. Uh, and then we have mob cramming, which is an interesting one. You see, if I get a bunch of mobs in here, like this, they're absolutely fine, yeah? Because the original max entity cramming count is 24. Note that in older versions of Minecraft, you could have about 140 to 170 entities, depending on your world uh, limits and stuff, in a single spot, and the game would have no problems at all. Now, if you have any more than 24, which I'm going to try and hit here, it will start to kill off mobs if... So I put 25 in, I'm not even... I wasn't counting, yeah. I wasn't counting, but <laughs> that guy was the 25th. So right now there is currently 24 entities there. You can see it from the entity count. Actually, the entity count's a bit messed up, but that, that's besides the point. If I put that in there, you see it's going to it's going to slowly kill creepers. Every time I add one in, it's going to kill another. As you can see there. Now, some people think this has ruined mob farms, and in a way, I kind of agree, but at the same time this has also revolutionized mob farms because this means that if you put a number of mobs in a single space, such as up to 24 using the default game rules, then they'll start to kill themselves after a while and you'll just be getting free drops. No looting effect, no XP, but you're getting free drops nonetheless. Now this can be changed to, for example, 8, it's going to do this until we only have 8 left in there. Uh, and of course this, this number can be changed a lot. Yeah, you see I also count as an entity if I go in there as well, so I'm going to put a few more creepers in there like that. There's now eight. If I stand in there as well, you'll see that one dies. Just like that. I'm not sure what the prioritization is on that. For example, 
whether or not it kills the player eventually, because it would make sense that if there's too many mobs eventually the player gets suffocated, but right now it's just the entities in there get suffocated as you can see there. So I'm not really sure how that works, but I'm not willing to find out because if I'm going survival mode and jumping there I will die anyway. <laughs> so yeah, that's a new interesting game rule. This can be changed to anything though, so if I was going to change this on my regular world, I'd probably just set it to something like 100 to be honest, because it's good, like, <laughs> 100 uh, max entity cramming, that's basically just like old Minecraft again, but if it starts to get to the point where it lags you too much, you just get free mob drops, so that's a pretty good change in my opinion. This thing is a good change, but not if you're on a server without commands. If you can change this yourself with commands, like I would do in my world where I have cheats enabled, then this is a great command, but honestly, if you don't have commands, it sucks to be you. <laughs> I apologise in advance, but it sucks to be you. Your, your mob farm's going to be very boring now, so so there you go. Next up we have the new enchantments, or I, well I say enchantments, I mean curses. This is called the Curse of Binding and the Curse of Vanishing. These are two new enchantments which are quite easy to explain really. I didn't really understand watching these from having watched Minecon. Uh, I watched Minecon live on, on, um, on YouTube, I didn't actually go because I'm not in America. But we have the Curse of Vanishing and the Curse of Binding. Now what the Curse of Binding does, if I put this on, Wait, I'm in creative mode. <laughs> Game mode... Survival. There we go. I now can't take this off, as you can see. I'm clicking right now, you can hear my mouse. So, hang on. It's not happening. Not, nothing's happening. It's not doing anything. Curse of Binding, what it essentially does, if you wear a piece of armor that has Curse of Binding, then it stays on until you die. It's as simple as that. Uh, this is helpful for map makers, not really helpful for any sort of, you know, rewards in terms of treasure or dungeons. I think Mojang will find a way to implement it, to be honest, because they don't want to have a feature which is pointless in survival mode. Um, but yeah, this is a big feature for map makers because it means that you can give someone a piece of armor that they have to wear. Uh, but also, the thing with Curse of Vanishing, the Curse of Vanishing can be put on any. Uh, and bleh, bleh. by the way, these enchantments, Curse of Vanishing can be put on any tool, but the Curse of Binding can only be put on helmets, chest plates leggings or boots, and I mean elytras as well when I say chest plates, so you can actually have Curse of Binding on elytra. Uh, so what we do is we kill ourselves, <laughs> as you do, and you'll see that all of the items have disappeared. Doesn't seem to make any sense, does it? Well, that's exactly what the Curse of... Um, well, that's exactly what the Curse of Vanishing does. The Curse of Vanishing basically makes it so that when you die, any items that you were holding which had the Curse of Vanishing, vanish. So there you go. That's basically another thing for map makers, and possibly another thing for dungeons and loot chests, is that if you're stupid enough to lose an item from your inventory, whilst you know you're out on your travels by dying, you won't get it in back. You won't get it back, basically. So I think that's a pretty cool change. Again, it could be used quite well in terms of map making and also treasures and dungeons. So there we go. Next up, we're going to teleport to a village. This change is a massive change, and this isn't going to be addressed today because it's going to take me a while to do. But right here we have the librarian, as you can see there. And this guy right here is a cartographer. This is a new profession for the librarian villagers, which you can get. Oh, hello. <laughs> Baby cleric. I guess they've converted you to villagerinism already. I feel sorry for you, bro. Uh, so yeah, this guy's the cartographer. If we get ourselves some paper... In fact, I want to test this out because I'm not sure how this will work entirely. If we get paper, put it in there. He's going to give us emeralds for his paper. And he's going to get happy. Get happy. Good job. And now we can go to the next page and sell him a compass for an emerald. So I'm going to go... Compass. I'm glad that these trades are quite cheap, to be honest. Like, a compass is not expensive. So that's another emerald. He's going to get happy again. Good, good. And then we can start to get things like empty maps, which are a different story entirely, because they cost seven emeralds. But we want to do it because, you know, the next enchantments are what, we, what we're here for. And then we can start to move on to... No? Nothing? Oh, that makes sense. Okay. <laughs> Right, I was wondering what it would do with the maps, but basically we're on a super flat world, so it just simply doesn't allow us to get them. These are the new uh, green villages, by the way. You can't access their inventory right now. Inventory? Inventory? Inventory. Inventory. You can't access their inventory right now. They just do nothing. They're idiots. They're just nitwits. They're useless villagers. These guys are like the villagers that are on the dole. They don't do anything. They just sit here and be useless. Completely and utterly useless. I'm mean, not surprised. Green isn't a creative colour, so... There you go. Right, let's go back to the main place. And yeah, I was going to explain those basically what the cartographers do. If you unlock a cartographer's fourth and fifth trade, it will be an ocean explorer map and a forest explorer map, respectively. These things will lead to ocean monuments and woodland mansions, which are a new part of this game. Uh, and we'll be exploring those probably in the next episode, if I can find a village in between this one and the next. So yeah, that's interesting. Good new change there. It makes, it makes us able to find dungeons which are incredibly rare. Uh, and yeah, well, like I said, we'll be doing that afterwards. I want to show you this finally. Last thing here to show you today before I show you some Easter eggs and stuff uh, is basically the shulker box. 
What the shulker box does is it allows you to store items. Why am I getting so many <laughs> natural things? Flowers, flowers, grass. There we go. It allows you to store items. Oh. Oh, that's cool. Oh, <laughs> I did not know that. But apparently, hoppers interact with um with shulker boxes. Huh. Okay. Well, that's interesting. Uh, that can be got around. You can. Yeah, okay, well, <laughs> my point still stands. Imagine there's items in this, okay? Break it, goes into there, goes into the dispenser, and... Ta-da! And it would still have the items in. If you guys didn't know, the idea of the shulker box is that it just retains its items. So if I go into game mode survival and give myself a d diamond... No, give Scalibur a diamond pickaxe. I can mine this thing like that, and it's going to retain its items. Cyan carpet, yellow carpet, purple carpet, green carpet, black carpet. And this basically allows for super bulk storage. If I give myself a chest, I want to test this actually. If I put a chest down, can I put these inside a chest? You can! Damn! <laughs> okay, that's nice. Right. That introduces a lot of possibilities. Basically, this right here is a chest and you can store any items in it, but you can also break it with a pick and it will keep those items. I can then put that in a chest. So this chest now effectively has its storage times its storage, which if I just get the calculator up, it's 27 times 27 times 64. This chest can now store 46,656 items in a single chest. I'll allow you to just appreciate how incredible that is. <laughs> now these things are really powerful, as you can probably tell by the numbers I've just read out, but they're also really hard to find, they're also really rare. So if I go back into game mode C, basically every time you kill a shulker, which I'll show you right now, shulker, there's the shulker, get myself a diamond sword, like that. Every time we kill a shulker, it's going to have a 50% chance of dropping a shulker box. I'm just going <laughs> to... It wasn't opening, so there we go. Yeah, 50% of the time he will drop a shulker box. Which, as you guys will know, I like to change textures and stuff. If this texture doesn't get changed when the version, when what, there we go. If this texture doesn't get changed when 111 gets fully released, I am redoing this because, not gonna lie, that is one of the worst textures I have ever seen in this game. Literally nothing about it looks nice, but uh, there you go. And yeah, like I said before, you craft two of those together with a chest to get yourself a shulker box, so there we go. Finally, I wanted to show you two new things about the Vindicator and the Voker. These guys are the new Illagers, as they're called, as you can see here. They're basically evil villagers. I think these are a reference to um, vampires, if I'm completely honest, because they have grey skin and they stay in a house all day in the middle of the woods. <laughs> they're vampires. I think that's a really cool way of putting it. Uh, but basically, these guys are really cool. They're like new mobs that you can fight. I'm going to give myself a shield and a sword, and I don't really want to show too much off with these guys um, because we will be fighting them next episode specially, but basically if I go into game mode survival we can fight these guys <laughs> and they are quite powerful there we go, and they drop diamonds and occasionally their axe as well, which is pretty cool uh, this guy though, the, that guy was the vindicator that we just killed, this guy is the evoker and he's much more powerful as you'll see in just a second Oh my god. I love this guy. He's it's literally the coolest thing. He brings those spikes up out of the ground um, and uses them to like basically kill you. And these things are so annoying. I mean, they're, they're named after being annoying, but it doesn't change how annoying they are. <laughs> they're called vexes, named after the fact that they, they're very vexing. And as you can see here, I'm actually going to let them kill me so I can get the totem of undying to work again. So, come at me, bros. Come at me, bro. They're not doing anything. <laughs> There we go. How cool is that? I love the sound effects in this pack. A lot of the sounds in Minecraft, especially in the 1.9 sound changes part, because as some people know, the 1.9 had a lot of sound changes. This one, I actually love the sounds of this pack. Like, the water sound changes, and even the weather sound changes, I didn't really like any of them, but the sounds in this one are just amazing. Like, the Evoca and the Vex sounds, and the Totem of Undying sound, but even the Llama sounds, I just love all the sounds in this pack. The sounds are much better. I'm saying pack too much. I've been playing too much modded recently. <laughs> I really have. Anyway, that's going to do it for today. Um, I hope you enjoyed the 111 changes. We'll be actually exploring some of these in the world next episode if I can find myself a decent cartographer. Um, but yeah, 
apart from that, that's all from me. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the 111 changes, uh, and look forward to going through some more of them in the actual survival world with you guys next time. And hopefully, by the time we come around to doing that, uh, 111 may have been released fully, and then of course we're going to be on the way to getting Optifine for 111, and then I can have my beautiful sky back and the beautiful star field. So, yeah. Anyway, thanks for watching. Just wanted to make a quick update video on all the changes made to this, and I will see you in the next one. Thanks for watching. Take care. Bye-bye.